everyone this is lightning bliss and uh well i am doing another special speed paint story time and because this is a special D, D character art piece that i'm doing i figured i would talk about how i got into D, &D in the first place kind of inspirational to me i guess because i never thought in my wildest dreams that i would ever get into it because eh the story i'm about to tell you may seem a little sad and not downright depressing but it starts off rough but it ends on a high note and and I just gotta say thank you to like all of my friends who got me involved in it this far and I'm having so much fun with the campaigns I'm in right now so yeah I'm just gonna get started. So it was around the time when I was in middle school I believe I had to have been oh gosh um 13 years old maybe 13 14 and a half and um yeah I was invited to a game by one of my childhood friends who lived down the street from me he was already a great above me so he was already in high school and apparently he met some other friends in high school that were all into this D, &D thing and I honestly never heard about it until he said oh D, D, it stands for Dungeons and Dragons it's a role play game where you create your own character and you basically role play as it while uh, fighting against other monsters and stuff but you have to use your imagination it's heavily role playing it's heavily using your imagination I thought you'd like to be a part of it since you know since we were kids you used to role play all the time like you would pretend to be something you're not I'm like dude I get to play as something I'm not something I've always done as a kid I'm a natural at this let's go let's play so yeah I meet his friends and it probably didn't help that I didn't know either of his two other girlfriends uh, so yeah he was the only guy and, and there were two girls that he met in high school I've never met them before I don't even think they went to our middle or elementary school for that matter so it was a little weird um but they seemed friendly enough I suppose I mean again I didn't know much about them other than that they greeted me they told me who they were and they had already created characters but my friend had to explain to them that I'm extremely new to this so I'm gonna need a little help so they went through a list of races that I could be and they listed almost nearly all of them in the, the campaign now don't ask me what type of D&D &D version we were playing um this had to be around the late 90s to early 2000s I believe it was around 2001 or between 1999 and 2001 I don't know maybe someone could tell me down in the comments of what kind of versions of D&D &D were out at the time <laughs> that might help narrow it down for you but um yeah they listed down the races that I could be and uh I remember specifically the game being called Dungeons and Dragons and the fact that there are dragons in this game kind of led me to believe that oh I could be a dragon in this game couldn't I now okay some of you guys are probably thinking that is a very new or rookie mistake to assume that you could be a dragon because dragons are very powerful characters to play usually they're more like the villains or the enemies or the obstacle you have to face later on but I was told by my friend that technically you could be a dragon and that's what I wanted to be because even since I was a kid I never played anything that was considered human or bipedal or elven goblin centaur or anything I mean I might have played a centaur once but like in my imagination land my pretend land but I never really liked being humanoid of any kind because I'm always like that I am human every day when I wake up when I go to sleep I am always a two-legged woman so I didn't want to be anything else other than a quadruped like creature so a unicorn a dragon a griffin those were the three primary candidates I wanted to do and naturally I wanted to go for dragon because let's face it dragons are cool I mean you can't deny that dragons are really really cool so anyway I asked them could I be a dragon they all took one look at me and said no I asked why not that was one of the races you listed you said I could pick any race I wanted they said yeah but dragons are overpowered and they take too long to create so no we're not letting you be a dragon but that's what I want I, I pleaded with them and they said no either pick something else or don't play it, they were really kind of standoffish with me at this point I, I'm also noticing that there might have been an age gap between us I was maybe a year and a half younger than them um, I was as old as my friend but I was held back a year that probably did 
didn't help things because they just frowned at me thinking that I was supposed to be in high school, but I'm not. And I don't know. They just, they just had this downsided view upon me for some reason. And I can't fully understand why other than I wasn't in high school and I was clearly a noob at this game. So they didn't have a whole lot of patience with me. They insisted I be, and if I wanted to have dragon quality so much that I be a dragon born or a halfling, like a dragon half. And obviously this is not what I wanted, but for the sake of playing the game and just to be part of the fun and because I was invited all the way out here, I decided to go ahead and agree to their terms. I think what hurt even more though was that my friend never defended me on this. I think that hurt the most. I like, I kind of turned to him expecting him to, hey, help me out here. Could you please support me? But no, he kind of just nodded his head and agreed with the others and, and told me to, and, and basically said, yeah, don't be a dragon. You, that's overpowering. That's noobish. Yada, yada, yada. So yeah, that hurt a lot. And I, I basically just bared the weight of that and agreed to their terms. And I created a, I think it was a black dragon half halfling. I think I was half human, half black dragon or something. I think that was what I was designed. And I'm pretty sure I was a barbarian because I legit didn't know how to follow uh, a book of spells or set everything up. They, they were kind of just throwing a lot of stuff at me and expecting me to understand it. And I, I legit kept having to stop them and repeat what they said. C wait, could you explain this a little bit better to me? I, I don't fully understand. And every time I asked them to please explain things better, I they kind of just gave me this look like I was inconveniencing them. So I can I can just say right now that um, when it comes to D&D &D sessions, be sure that you're playing with friends and it's people that you know. Otherwise, I don't know, you might get issues like what I was dealing with here. Anyway, we start playing the game and I admit I probably got too excited in the role playing because they basically told me my character could do whatever I wanted my character to do as long as it followed the uh, personality traits and their, uh, I guess their religion or their, their law. Like she was like, um, I think she was overly chaotic good or something or extremely good, very lawful, but she was very prideful and, and kind of uh, demanding. Again, I was extremely new to this game. So when I, I guess my character got a little cocky and wanted to display her strength or whatnot. And yeah, again, this is a rookie mistake, but uh, I guess I destroyed a item that my friend's character had. And as an end result, he basically said and throughout the entire game that his character hated me and absolutely wanted nothing to do with my character. And again, this really, really hurt because it was bad enough his friends weren't treating me like part of the group, but then he kind of outcasted me in the game as well. Now, again, this is just how the game is played. This is how your characters are going to react. I get it. Um, but at the time, I was new to this and I didn't really understand it. And worst of all, I was playing with people who had no patience. So after that game, um, I think it lasted about two hours. And then by then I realized it was time for me to go back home because it was time for dinner. But um, yeah, on my way out, my friend was escorting me out and said, hey, did you have fun? And I said, no, not really. And he's like, uh, why not? I'm like, well, your friends seem nice and all, but I kind of felt excluded and I had no idea what I was doing and I was confused on a lot of things. And he's like, yeah, well, you're just a rookie at it. You'll get used to it. And I'm like, I don't think there's going to be a next time, dude, because I didn't feel welcome. And then I kind of just left after that because I kind of was in tears at that point. And he didn't stop me and he didn't talk to me about it. He kind of just let me go. And unfortunately, I think our friendship kind of ended there too, because he kind of just stopped talking to me after that. So yeah, that was back when I was a kid or a middle-aged teenager and I had no intentions of ever picking up the game again. Not to mention it probably didn't help that there was a stereotype stigma that if you play D&D &D, that means you are a grown adult who lives in their parents' basement or something. I know that is a really cruel thing to assume of people but that was the stigma at the time that I was introduced to so I was thinking oh I dodged a bullet. I don't need to play d and I can play other games there are other plenty of games I can play and why would I need to role play in a game when I do it in my head all the time anyway right so yeah that was my mindset at the time and then of course we fast forward to 
eh, mere present day about a few years ago, a couple years ago. I'm hanging out uh, in the TF2 chat with some of our friends. Uh, I believe Josh was getting really, really hyper excited for a D&D game he wanted to set up, but for fun, quote, quote, he just said for fun. He wanted to know if any of us were interested in just creating a character for fun, not to actually play in. And, uh, well, everybody, mostly everybody except me, uh, got on board with the idea, but then he PM'd me asking, hey, do you want to create a D&D character just for fun, not, not, not to play us? And I'm thinking, why would I create one, though? I'm not going to play it, and I'm not a big fan of D&D, not after what happened the first time, to which I did share this story with my friends beforehand. And he said, oh, no, 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 this is just to test my ability and to see if I can't create characters really well, so come on, pick whatever you want. Yeah, I heard that before, too. Somebody said I could be what I want, and they said, they ended up telling me that I couldn't be that, so I'm not even sure that I want to try. And he said, uh, come on, I'll let you pick what you want. What would you like? And I'm like, okay, I want a dragon. <laughs> There was an awkward silence for a moment, uh, <laughs> but then Josh said, you know what? I, I can do that. It's going to be a challenge, but I think I can pull it off. So let's do it. I'm a little surprised that he signed up on it and we started creating Amber Hawthorne. I'll uh, put a picture of her up on the screen here, uh, the latest version of her. <laughs> so yeah, I created a golden half white dragon with cyan eyes and her I named her Amber Hawthorne. The Hawthorne being after the last name of her wizard human father. <laughs> and um, obviously, no, I, I basically did say to Josh that um, I get that dragons can be really overpowering, so how would we balance this? And he said, oh, well, you'll be very small. You'll be like smaller than a horse. You're young. You're not an adult dragon. You're like just a hundred years old, which is extremely young for a dragon in the D&D campaigns. you like, you can only use fire once a day, that sort of thing. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, this was fun. It was fun to create this character, but uh, I'll leave it at that for now. Thanks for inviting me to do this. And that was that. I had no intention of playing D&D at the time. I just created the character Amber Hawthorne, and that was it. Um, no, I think it was about a few weeks later that Josh came to me and said, Hey, we're setting up a game of D&D &D called Welcome to the Show. <laughs> you want in? And I said, No. Um, and he's like, but we created your character for you, Amber Hawthorne, remember? And I'm like, you said that was for fun. I feel betrayed. I feel feel used. You said you were just creating it for fun, that we weren't actually going to play. And he said, yeah, well, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> so he and I kind of bicker about this for a little while, and I explained to him what happened the first time, again, what happened when I first tried to play a session with D&D, &D, to which he basically countered in all the right ways. Well, first off, you're playing with friends, not people who don't know who you are. Two, you created an actual character that you do want to play. And three, you admit that you never gave the D&D &D game a, a, a fair chance, so why not give it a shot? Besides, again, you're going to be playing with friends, so please, please, he was like, and I'm like, is this an order? He's like, yes, yes, it will get you to play, then yes, it's an order. I'm like, ah, ah, he dragged me into that uh, Skype chat room of our D&D sessions that we still use today, <laughs> kicking and screaming, but yes, I ended up in Welcome to the Show, and ever since then, I have been hooked. Now, granted, the first season of d and it, it was a struggle, I will admit. There were times where I felt like I had no idea what I was doing, I wasn't clicking with my character, I felt really stupid, really. Um, I felt like because my character is the only fighter of the group, um, but she's not doing anything as maybe useful as healing like Doc's character, or magically enhancing others like Eliora's character, or, or Ivan's, uh, uh, Finn's character. Uh, Jalaran was a skilled ranger and a, and a spy. It, it just got to a point where my, where I felt like I am a terrible player. I'm not good at this. I shouldn't be playing at all. I had a lot of self-doubt, and it got even worse when I was making really bad rules in the game. And 
And I remember distinctly there was an episode, uh, most of you who watch uh, Welcome to the Show will remember one of the episodes of season one where we were end up in a labyrinth uh, and we were being chased by a Balor. And unfortunately, Jaminia, one of the AI characters was destroyed or killed basically, saving my character. So my character was clumsy. I made a bad roll, lost my opportunity for stealth. And in order to save my life, uh, the uh, AI character Jaminia had to save my life, but as a result, she ended up getting killed. I felt absolutely terrible because that was technically Josh's character, D the DM's character. And I felt like I was a failure at this game. I know it's make believe, but it it's the fact that I wasn't having fun at that point. I felt really bad. I felt hopeless as a player. Nothing was clicking with me. And then to top it off, uh, a character died at the hands of my lack of ability to roll a good roll. So kindly and patiently, Josh pulled me to the side and say, hey, I overheard you saying you weren't having any fun. What's going on? What can I do to make this better? And I, I, I kind of just laid it out on the line. I told him that my character is making terrible roles, which is, you know, that's part of the game. Uh, I'm not, I don't know how to role play with my character. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I feel like she's useless. I feel like I'm not contributing to the team at all. To which he had to point out lots of things to me that yes, my character had been contributing a lot. I do a lot of melee damage to help my team get an early start into the fight and gain an early advantage. Uh, and while my character is having a bad time with my roles lately, he, he actually stopped to ask me, have you ever considered that maybe Amber is a clumsy dragon? And then it clicked. I can be clumsy too. That is the one thing that me and my character do have in common. I am very klutzy and I am very naive sometimes and <laughs> I'm extremely gullible. So if I get a bad roll with my character and something silly happens, whether it be unfortunate or not, we can still stack it up to the fact that, well, that's just part of her character. She is a clumsy dragon. And from then on, I was able to click with my character. I was able to role play with her. I just had to find some common ground in the game of how to play my character and how to relate my character to others. In the end, D&D kind of made me realize that not only am I gaining like new perspective on myself, but I'm also learning from my friends about how they react to situations, even if it is in make-believe. Not to mention, I'm no longer scared to talk about my frustrations, even when I feel like I'm doing poorly. It was one of those things where you know, I thought I was doing a terrible, a ter I was playing a terrible game. I was not making it fun for my friends that I'm a failure. But then my friends like Josh go out of their way to help me get situated and to explain to me that nobody's mad at me. It's just a game. Everybody's just trying to have fun. And if we're not having fun, then he feels like he's doing something wrong. And, uh, and then again, this is supposed to be fun. And if you're not having fun, then you should be playing. Well, golly, guys, the first D&D game I ever played played was not fun, but this was. This D&D campaign, the very first official game I can say that I played, I had a big smile on my face. I was playing with some of my closest, bestest friends. I was learning character traits about myself through a character that I play with and yeah. We were sharing a story together through Josh's eyes and we were having fun while doing it. I have to say, D&D has really, really, really inspired me to even increase my artwork ability, has able to help me conjure up new ways to rethink stories, has just given me a whole new look on how to have fun with your friends and to talk with them and get new ideas together. It really, really is just a great game to play with the right people. And I really hope me sharing the story with the rest of you will inspire you to maybe pick up the game and try. Find a group of friends you trust or even your family. Give it a chance and have fun with it. Find somebody who's willing to do uh, the DM role and create characters with each other and come up with some fun stories. Seriously, you won't regret it. And so guys, I am Lightning Bliss. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, and of course, yes, let me introduce you to some of the characters from a current D&D &D campaign that is being DM'd by RML and being hosted on Elioris channel. We have Mira, RML's character with the ferret. We have Cyril. Uh, I forgot what kind of 
creature she is. Um, I, I, I know Ellie's gonna kill me about that later, but yeah, she is a, uh, she is a, <laughs> she's a crazy one. I'll just say that much. Do not, do not tick off this flying creature. She will destroy you. We have Nepash, who is actually Mad Mudgkid's character, and she is an, uh, I believe she is an orc, who likes to drink a lot. We have Katie Patterson's character, Ruby, who is, uh, I believe she's a ranger or a rogue, uh, and she's the only human on our team, by the way, but she is really kick butt, and she, she does a lot of cool tricks and has a lot of skill with her bow and arrow. And then, of course, there's my character named Dame Kingsman. Um, Dame is a deer chimera with the body of a puma and the tail of a milk snake. And yes, she has her little war hammer. And I'm guessing some of you are asking, how does Dame talk? Well, she's got this little amulet on her head that helps her talk. And, and yeah, you'll learn more about Dame as things go by. But yes, be sure to check out the campaign of Ladies' Night, the Pioneer Carriage and hopefully I said that right. Um, you can find that on Elior's channel. I'll try to send, I'll try to leave a link in the, at the end of this video. Be sure to also check out the Welcome to the Show campaign that is being hosted on Dr. Wolf's channel, uh, cause that's where you'll find my other character, the Golden Half Dragon Amber Hawthorne. And there is also another campaign that I have recently been playing, but I'm not sure it's been uploaded yet. Uh, so I don't want to spoil anything on yet, that yet or my character character for that matter. So until that comes out, I will just leave y'all uh, guessing what that campaign will be. So <laughs> until then, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Every little bit helps. And if you would like to help out more, you can always check out my Patreon. Until then, guys, keep an eye out for those rainbows. They will make you smile.